So we'll start by taking your weight. So 167 flush. So for body composition, uh, you want to measure a couple of things. But essentially, put your arm like that. We're going to go subscapular. You want to assess subcutaneous fat mass, adipose tissue. And you do this by pinching at nine um, sites throughout the body that store, you know, subcutaneous fat mass. And that will fluctuate a lot, so 7.4. So these are all going to be millimeter measurements. And then you could trend them. More importantly than the percentage that it gives you is the ability to trend these pinches over time. So yeah. And that's going to give you good indication of what's happening to your body. Now let's say you're training three to four hours a day. You want to know, are you maintaining your lean mass? Are you burning fat? How is your weight fluctuating? Let's say you came back in a month and you were 162. What was that? Five yeah. pounds of loss. If you come back and all your pinches are the same size, flex your tricep. Loose. If you come back and all these pinches, um, you know, the fat mass stayed the same and then we do your internal fat and it stayed the same, not a good sign. That means you probably lost five pounds of muscle. Yeah. And then we measure the circumference of your muscles and then we see where that muscle came off, right? So it allows us to, to um, trend and track what's happening to the body, which is important for athletes. And there's different techniques, right? Some people like use more uh, measurement and some less, right? Like nine is it the most common? Um, there's yeah, there's a couple of different ones. They all have different names, like a Jackson Pollock or we use the per Perillo. But it depends on why you're using it. Now, if you're using it to get the body fat percentage, which none of them are really accurate to do, yeah. you know, some are better for some ages or populations than others. Uh, but if you're using it specifically to trend what's happening to the fat stores, you kind of want to use one uh, that uses enough of the important sites. So for us, the Perio measures important high fat sites. So we can see, and that's, we're less focused on the percentage that it gives us. It's going to give us a percentage. But we're more focused, it gives us all the sites that we need. Yeah. Right? So we, we see the kidney, we see the subscapular, we see the chest, the bicep super iliac, abdomen, quad, it gives us a good spectrum of the body. Some, they only do three measurements. That's going to give them a percentage. Maybe that percentage might be more accurate in certain populations, but it doesn't give me accurate trending of the whole body. Yeah. So, I mean, this is why we choose the, the Perio method. And that's why it's important to always use the same method. Like, you can go, yes. like, do it uh, at the beginning of the year with someone else, and, like, get, use another method, and then yeah. use someone else, and then... Exactly. So it's not only do you use the same method, but you have to be very good at pinching the same sites. Yeah. So like our dietitians who work here, uh, they spend three months of training, always just our clients come in, they all do the measurements, then they have to redo them. And it's difficult to develop your technique. Um, but we based it off of a landmark system. So we know, you know, okay, we always pinch here. And the more you do it, the better you get at how you pinch, where you pinch, but even just not only using the same system, the same sites, but how do you pinch those sites to reproduce, um, you know, consistent results. Yeah. And that's something that's very important because I could pinch you nine times and then I give someone who's inexperienced, they're gonna have nine completely different pinches. But it, for me, because I've done it, you know, thousands of times, I could do it without effort consistently. You come back in one month, I will consistently hit the same spot, spots and then have, you know, data that's More reflective. Yeah. And what would be the ideal like uh, frequency to do it? Like, it depends for sure for everyone. Like if it's a fighter, you're probably gonna do it like a lot more often. It depends. Like uh, your body doesn't change quickly. Yeah. You know, maybe in a week you'll have change. You probably will. So we usually measure anywhere from two to four weeks. We'll bring people back in for follow-ups, and it depends on how much they're training, where their competitions are at, yeah. like how important is their body, body fluctuations. So it's usually two to four week uh, area. That's interesting. So when it beeps, you're gonna pick up the handles and then you're gonna step on. So pick up the handles first. Yep, up. Uh, I pull, pull them out. Yep. Up. Now, arm straight. And then make good contact with the handles and the feet. So that's good. So what happens, is um, it's going to transmit electrical impulses 
from your legs through your abdomen to the arm, and then it's going to do it in multiple directions. Okay. We'll do arm, arm, leg, leg, through the abdominal cavity, and that's how it assesses the beat. So, uh, so bioelectric impedance, what it is, is fat does not conduct electricity, but muscle does, which yeah. is higher in water. So the more fat you have, the slower the impulses travel. So that's a way that we can trend what happens to your visceral fat, your internal fat. If those fluctuate, we'll see on this, okay, now your impulses are moving faster. Did it move faster through your legs or did it move faster when it went through your abdomen? Oh, so you can analyze that? Yes. Because some machine, like like some weight, they can tell you like your fat percentage, but they're not really reliable. But right. with this one, it's like cutting to uh, Right, so this is a more advanced one. I mean, it, it costs about $800 to $1,000 just for this machine. And the difference between a scale who does that is yeah. the scale will do it with one electrode and it goes from foot to foot. Okay. So it, it it's estimating whole body fat based on what's just happening and it's okay. going from two legs, which is not super yeah. accurate. Because Some people have more fat. Most, and for guys, yeah. you know that we're prone to storing it in the abdomen, but you, you can never trend that. So, I mean, it's kind of useless, that measurement. It's a, a little bit of a good gauge, I guess. Yeah. But it's basically not very important. Because I'm at least, at least seven uh, pounds heavier than like last year when I was racing. But I, I've been like, done the fat measurement. So, I wonder if like, is it all fat or is it also gain like muscle? So, so bicep is a, is a good, in men, there are certain sites that are more indicative of lean mass. You have sites that are high fat, low muscle, and sites that are high muscle, low fat. So sometimes that becomes more important when you're trying to trend uh, the arm straight. If you've lost lean mass, you want to look at a site, if you're looking for if you've lost or gained lean mass, you want to look at a site that's mostly lean mass. Okay. Okay. So the average will be 10 or? 9.7. 9 so what does that mean? That means, okay, based on that estimated percentage, uh, which I would say is probably pretty accurate in this case, um, you weigh 167, 167 pounds. So 9.7% of 167 is the amount of fat mass you have on your body. So then we could look at that. 167 times 0 0.097, it's about 16.2 pounds of fat mass, which isn't a lot. So the amount of fat you have is probably mostly, uh, you know, essential fat. Like you can't really reduce essential fat because your body, essential fat is, is fat that it stores around its organs um, and it's kept in places that it kind of needs. And it, it won't eat it. It's very difficult to eat your essential fat. It'll eat muscle before 